welcome to another episode of Unlady Mixtape. I am here with my friend Harry. How are you doing? I, I'm good. I'm here with my friend Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is fun. So, uh, so we start these um, mm-hmm. by getting a little bit of a uh, insight into you. Kind of mostly musically, but a bit of what you're up to, um, whatever it may be. Let's go the full art spectrum. The uh, full art spectrum. Yeah. Um, where do we begin? Uh, I um, I do music. Uh, that's good. Start. Good start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I play in some bands, mm-hmm. but um, only one of them's really active at the moment. Um, hopefully, some more soon. Uh, I like to host a show on Radio Control, the Op Show, mm-hmm. on Monday nights at the moment. Um, I like the stomach. I like great jobs, stuff around town. Um, just generally into lots of uh, local DIY art and music and theatre and just what it's going really I'm yeah. quite happy to yeah. like, hang out and get into it. Do you remember how you started being interested in music? Uh, like I started because my mum told me when I was like six, five or six, yeah. that I was doing music. <laughs> like, just that's what you're doing. You know, they're like, kind of like the, <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, you, you, would you really, like, would you like to try this? And then I, I don't think I really gave her an answer. And she was just like, oh, if, yeah, remember how you said you like, <laughs> wanted to try this? <laughs> so I um, yeah. started playing some bum notes on the recorder. Um, yeah, great stuff. Actually got, actually got quite good at that. Mm-hmm. Um, Can you still rock a main recorder these days? Probably could. I haven't actually touched one in a while. <laughs> um, it's on the agenda because I've been playing with melodica and stuff. Yeah. So I'm really actually quite keen to... Imagine bringing the recorder back. Yeah, well, like, I always think of like, like Stuart, um, who plays like saxophone and stuff and brings her on top. Yeah. And uh, some of the stuff I've been listening to lately is kind of like, I could make some really interesting with stuff the with the recorder. That'd be great, man. <laughs> That's some ideas, but. Um, recorder needs its like redemption, eh? It needs yeah. to be in a rock. It band. does, it does. Yeah. And I, um, I've got some quite okay recorders somewhere still from when I was young. So Plus, might, you I'm work at a school, them. so. Surely they have recorded. Don't no, I, I have recorded. Those out. Oh, okay. yeah, they're definitely gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> not in our department. Curse on their name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, they, they, they got me started. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it slowly. Over so what was after recorder? Uh, bassoon. Yeah. So I learned bassoon off my best friend's dad. Cool. He's an amazing bassoonist. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I got into like doing some orchestral stuff. And, yeah. And, I had people trying to make me sing and I didn't like that mm-hmm. and uh, I was kind of enjoying the orchestra thing and then I suddenly realised that there was this whole other like I don't yeah you'd always always knew there was like popular music but then suddenly realising that you could do popular music yeah. it wasn't just something that was on the radio or mm-hmm. on the TV um, and that was like a large part to do with just going to like the stomach and stuff yeah. my brother was going and uh, listening to Radio Control and stuff like that just all sort of happened within the space of like a year probably yeah. just it all clicked over and then you're into it yeah and that was it and yeah. it was like uh, I wanted to play guitar and do all sorts of stuff like that as well yeah. so which kind of usurped all classical music yeah but not to say that that wasn't a really good thing to yeah. have done <laughs> uh, as soon as you realise as soon as you hear a rock band you realise like why well, play guitar now or drums basically yeah <laughs> yeah well, that was, that was like, basically it was like three the, instruments yeah. I, I think I always had the fascination with guitar because I remember someone came to school and we were like five or six or something and, and they were playing electric guitar mm-hmm. when they were like six or seven years old or something like that yeah. and um, I just remember it was like this I now know that it was like this kind of weird cheap knockoff Fender Strat yeah. it was like um, cherry red I can remember it really vividly yeah. I remember um, this guy showing me his brother's band on a CD on the old like, boombox in class as well and being yeah. like whoa you know like and they, they were probably only like 14, 15 and they'd recorded that in the stomach, I think. Um, so it's kind of like interesting having remember that now, and always remember like that at the time. I didn't, I didn't really have any idea what that all meant, and then yeah. um, having like learned about the stomach and stuff like that, something it all like clicked. It was like, oh wow, no, yeah. this has actually been happening the whole time. Yeah, and then yeah, here we are today. Yeah. Right, well, let's get into your tracks. Um, mm-hmm. And track number one is I think it's I think I'm, well, how did I word it the First song you remember falling in love with, I kind of have it maybe as like your first favourite band or the first band you're obsessed with or something like that. Yeah, I was, I, when I listened to some other people's ones, I was like, oh, f- falling in love with someone or falling in love to the song. And then I was like, no, no, I'm going to go with the falling in yeah. love with the song. <laughs> 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 uh, at least like torturous memories. Mm, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, 
I, I went with, um, and I'm sure there was like, probably some really naff pop music from when I was really little, because I know I was into some naff pop music. Yeah, yeah. But I think this was like the song that I really first like, clicked to me as being one of those songs that I'll, I think I'll always really, really love. Yeah. Um, and funnily enough, it was one of those songs that like, when I was listening to that album, it was probably the first album as well that I really fell in love with. Um, it was the song that, you know, there's always one that you just like skip. Yeah. And so and that so I found that, that that's usually the one that I like the most. Yeah. It just takes a little while to work on it. So, <laughs> and it's it's the same. Like even yeah. now, if I listen to an album, usually the one that I want to skip. I yeah. know, like I gotta listen to it four or five times, and it'll be my favorite. Especially if you if you like an album so much that and you you listen to the album a lot and you skip it every time, mm-hmm. and then if you actually go back and listen to it, it's the freshest of the oh, album yeah, because yeah. you haven't worn it out. Like well, the rest of the it's usually not the single. It's usually the more experimental song on the album as well. I find well, it's yeah. like the longer, the slower developing one. Mm-hmm. So this is certainly slower developing. It's yeah. um, the song's by the Dodos and it's called uh, The Season, which was on their Visitor album. Yeah, just spelled the name. Yeah. yeah. Do you know um, the story behind why it's spelled? Yeah, it was like some kids were drawing. Um, they just like had some some kids drawing their album artwork, and it's yeah. like the album's got like. Ducks or something on it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it looks amazing, but yeah, someone, one of them spelt visitor with an E instead of an O, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's stuck. And they just and it looks really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which song, sorry? So it's uh, The Season. Right. Which, um, I love that song, Yeah, that's yeah. the one. And um, even like I listened to it this morning again, just to just, yeah. just yeah. to check, and I was like, yeah, wow, well, like. <laughs> Like now, like looking back on it, it, like it feels a little bit dated, but I'm still like, I'm still really infatuated mm-hmm. with that and that whole album because um, it was probably like one of those breakthrough. Like, oh wow, I can play guitar, and wow, I really want to play guitar like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the guitarist from that band, Eric Long, was definitely like a really big influence for yeah. a really long time. Mm-hmm. And probably still like that has a flowing effect to now. Yeah. Well, yeah. That whole style. So. Cool. Good yeah. choice. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Awesome. Uh, song number two is uh, my way of asking you what uh, what song makes you dance, but not everyone dances. So mm. I worded it. What song gives you energy? What song gives me energy? Mm. Uh, as soon as you said dance, I heard like half a dozen songs come in my head. Yeah, because we've been having like lots of like uh, throwback eighties uh, dance parties. Yeah, lately just in the, in the lounge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there are lots of things come to mind when you say that. But um, I'd actually selected. Um, a band that um, I'm really looking forward to seeing at the end of this year, um, Viet Cong. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a song called Bunker Buster, and it was again, it was like a, I wasn't really sure about it yeah. to start with. I was kind of like, uh, wasn't, I didn't quite get it, but it, um, it definitely right. stuck out. Yeah, it grew on me, and um, the track's called Bunker Buster. Yeah. And it's just got this really attacky, um, it's, it's kind of really quite vicious, um, but at the same time, kind of annoying. Guitar, mm-hmm. going on at the start, and it's just like the whole thing. The, the band's all part of one bigger picture, you know, doing this sort of custom thing. Yeah. Um, so that's one off the newest album. Yeah, 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 just off the, um, the album they dropped at the start of this year, and uh, it's still on high rotate. You know, like nine months later. Yeah, it's a good sign. Yeah, two months later. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much every day, still listening to that. Yeah, and you've got your ticket. And you're yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I recommend you to do <laughs> Listeners. Yeah. Uh, sweet. Okay. That, uh, that's our track number three. Uh, oh, sorry. That, that's track number two. two. Track number three is your idea of a love song. My idea of a love song yeah. would um, Interpret it how you be like. just totally throw away, um, to me, like throw away the four chord, sing a love song mm-hmm. about how you love something. Um, and it's kind of a bit cliche as well, but I like I I chose my bloody Valentine off Loveless um, the song when you sleep. Yeah. Because just there's just something about the whole like feeling of that song. Yeah. That is you know it it attacks it at a different level, not a like a explicit you know ex- explicitly saying you know this is a love song. It's sort of like just the way it feels. Mm. Mm. It's good. It's just a really, really good vibe. Yeah. And it's got that kind of like washy, um, that glide guitar thing going on in there. Um, just really, and the thickness of it as well. Yeah. And I suppose as well because it's got a red album cover. And once I've seen the album cover, I just automatically yeah. s- like see that color mm-hmm. while I'm listening to the music. Yeah. So it all sort of fits together. Yeah, yeah. 
And I suppose uh, if you meet someone who also liked that song. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Automatic love song. Right Dave, Dave's right onto it, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. So, uh, what was the song name again? It was called uh, When You Sleep. Um, so it's sort of uh, just starting the second half of the album. It's kind of like a, there's a really long, um, developed sort of part of the album before it, and then it sort of jumps back into this really uplifting, Cool. And it's, yeah, it sort of throws it back up there. It's cool. Yeah. Awesome. She listened to the whole album though, anyway, you know. Yeah, we probably can't put the whole album on no. for this, but yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's advice from Harry. Listen yeah. to the whole album. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet, number three. Okay, track number four uh, is a song that is attached for you to a, a great uh, story or memory. Um, this was the hardest one for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I. I pulled this song out of the hat about four minutes, five minutes before we sat down to do this. Um, Excellent. I was, I was having to think about other songs that I think are um, one of the other questions coming up and uh, this sort of came to mind and I thought, oh, I can't really choose. And then I thought, actually, no, this is a good story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like, when I remember it, I just remember how it's, yeah, kind of like, it was at a festival and um, at, at Camp Alokan, the last one, mm -hmm. and it had been raining and it was cold like a, it was in Wainu and Marco and it was like it was it was middle of summer but it was cold. Yeah yeah. And um, it takes a while for it to heat up over there. Yeah, yeah it was it was southerly I think and mm -hmm. it was, yeah there was mist and rain and um, this band um, that I'd seen earlier in the festival just sort of by you know you, with Campbell Oh you didn't get the lineup you sort of got there and the lineup was presented to you. Yeah yeah so yeah. everyone was telling me to each other who which bands you're gonna see so um, this band Noah from Sydney were playing and I was told by a few people that I had to go see them. So I went and saw them and that kind of blew my mind yeah. in a really understated way. Like they're just the type of music when you hear it. It's, right. it's nothing too fancy mm -hmm. but it was really, really good. Um, and they sort of announced that they were going to be doing this like their final show ever, uh, a renegade set at this like real weird time at like 2am I think it was yeah. um, on the last night. and. Um, and they were calling out quits after that. That's yeah, the they said show. they were going to do that. Was going to be their last show. It turns out they did some more shows. Only <laughs> I mean, a couple of yeah. um, back in um, Australia. But uh, so I was like obsessed. I was like, I have to go see this mm. band. Um, that was so good. And um, we ended up pretty like saturated um, at the festival as well. So you know, you'd be a bit of um, intoxication. Mm -hmm. um, seen some really cool stuff during the day. We've been playing around in the mud. Yeah. Like playing <laughs> with uh, some of our friends yeah. and uh, I, we, we kind of like crashed out after um, lots of partying um, and my friends, I managed to like find my friend's keys to his car which was parked up next to the place where they were going to be playing mm -hmm. and got in the car, it was freezing so me and my mate Tommy, who's a drug show host, yeah. got in the car uh, in our like ponchos and stuff it was like 1am and uh, we were starving and dehydrated and freezing and I saw like I turned the engine on. Yeah. Well, like, I turned the AC Crank on. The heaters, yeah. Crank the heaters and realised it wasn't working after about 20 minutes of pumping cold air on us. <laughs> <laughs> might have so, dried you off a bit at least. So, so I like, I, I thought about it for about 10 seconds and then just decided to turn the engine on and start revving the, the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, by which stage we decided we were really hungry, so we went over to the food truck. There was, uh, there was like a really cool, like, peppy food truck. Mm -hmm. um, it was really weird, but cool. Mm -hmm. uh, to get some of these really awesome samosas that they did. Yeah. Turns out they didn't have the food left because everyone else had the same idea. Yeah. Um, so they had some cold rice and a paper, paper plate. It was like cold and dry. And they didn't have anything to put with it, so we got one pakora between the two of us and yeah. <laughs> some like chutney yeah. <laughs> and I mixed it up <laughs> and I can just add some tomato sauce and I remember sitting in this car yeah um, yeah smashing that back and revving the engine real hard and tooting and flashing the lights <laughs> um, and, then, and, then we, and then we went and saw this band yeah and uh, I was I was pretty out of it by that stage yeah. but it was it must was, be feeling better it was, even, it was even better just yeah. for having like had put in all that energy to stay awake and try and keep ourselves awake yeah um, so, uh, to get to the point, the the band um, 
it was Noah, mm-hmm. um, who have some cool stuff on Bandcamp still. And uh, the track, um, in particular, that I've, I've picked because I think that's like the coolest track, and I can remember them playing it. It's mm-hmm. um, Dead Arm. Cool. It's really just, yeah, it just works. And you'll see what I mean by like understated. Yeah. But awesome. And yeah. Like, in a live context. And you've got a stomach full of like cold rice. And yeah, you're, like, I'm wet. Just past shivering, like slightly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like soaked right through <laughs> through my thermal. Yeah. Right all right, um, we can all picture that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I've got some um, some renegade, uh, sort of some bootlegs of mm-hmm. these sets. And uh, in the middle of the set, I can hear someone shouting out like Harry <laughs> 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 from across the room. <laughs> I think that was because I hadn't actually noticed that anyone else was there that I knew. I right, we right, at, right. It was sort of at that stage of yeah. the day. Um, yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. It's good Brilliant. Story. That's a, that's a fantastic yeah. track. Uh, track number five, and uh, I thought there might be a bit of a crossover here for you, mm. um, which there was, but that's okay. You just get to tell two uh, stories of uh, like a live show or a live band or um, some live set that you remember. Yep. Uh... It's not like a particular live set, but just a, like a um, song to I'll start with the song because the last few I've rambled. Yeah. Um, song I uh, picked was um, Trinity by Da Da Die mm-hmm. um, off their album um, Harmony, and it was just um, just something about that band, like seeing them live. Yeah. Wherever I've seen them live, mm-hmm. um, just like killed it. A number of times, I'm sure. Yeah, every time I've seen them, it's just been from the Victorias and. Uh, yeah, and uh, just the like the thickness of it, the sound, and like it doesn't matter whether it's like a really crummy DIY or whether it was like in a really big professional mm. um, setting, so it just it just really worked for me. Yeah. Um, and even now, like if, I, if they were playing, I, I'd be there. I think. Yeah, if it was close. Yeah, totally. Do yeah. you remember the first time you saw them? Uh, it wasn't long ago, and it wasn't actually that long ago. Right. It was just kind of like yeah. 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 I really like this band. Um, I'll put like, them in my top 10 mm-hmm. for sure and um, yeah it was just like one night and we went to see them play with another great band EMT um, just in Wellington mm-hmm. um, saw them in that Space Monster uh, and uh, just drove over like you do and I remember being really excited because it was like one of my favourite bands mm-hmm. and I hadn't seen them and then when they were playing they were sort of like Right there, I was standing yeah. right there, like yeah. with them. Um, and then uh, a couple, well, maybe like six months later or something, um, they came and played at our venue. Yeah, great job. And that was like another thing with it. It was just like, yeah. wow, you know, like my favorite, one of my favorite bands is playing at yeah. the venue that I helped run. Yeah, that's, that's I guess amazing. that's it. I just remember they were one of those ones that really blows you away the first time you see them. Like, it's like, oh wow, this is their Yeah, show. Like, like it's like their show is. As good as their albums, and yeah. Their albums are great, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or so. even another level. Like yeah. Some bands, yeah, like, yeah this is yeah. what I thought it would be. They are always, they were always to me like, oh, that's right, these guys do it really well. Yeah, right. and, and, and the thing is, like, I mean, they're another band that's like a pretty big influence on the sort of music I make as mm-hmm. well. So it's like every time I see them, yeah, I love a lot. Yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome. All right, well, that's uh, track number five, which leads us to the end of the tape. A very short tape, mm. uh, and it is the song to, I guess to be played at your funeral or your funeral song. Or mm. yeah, Take it was hard. I, <laughs> I, I went through this one. Um, this one's hard to pick one because there's so yeah, many good so options. Good, yeah, I came down two, and I'll, I'll pick one. But yeah. um, the song at your funeral, you saw like that whole thing of like I think, I think everyone said you know like you know, something happy to go away on and something epic. Yeah. Go away on, or like or make sad. everyone cry. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to make everyone cry, but like I'd like to make them like cry in like a a happy, like yep. oh, like hopeful kind of way. progressive, yeah, yeah. fulfilling yeah. like kind of way. Um, and it's a while away, I hope. So like, uh, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got a few more options <laughs> yeah. before then. Yeah. Um, but uh, two songs I came up with for this, and uh, I'll, the one I'm not going with quite. Um, so I thought Mammoth by the Skeptics. Because mm-hmm. um, they're a band I'm super into at the moment, mm-hmm. and I think it will be for a while. And that song is just epic. That's like, to me, the penultimate track. Like, yeah. If you know the Skeptic story, yeah, that was cruelly cut short. But that's like one of the last tracks they recorded and released. And it, mm-hmm. it just, I can't imagine how good it would have been if they'd carried on. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, how weird they would have gone with that mm-hmm. sound. Um, and it's just, it's such an epic 
Yeah. And the piano line in that scene is still back yeah. then. So you think about it. Yeah. Um, but uh, the track I did go with. Hip to the Pose. By. Hip to the Pose by um, a band related to a band I've already mentioned. Um, women who are from, um, from Canada. Uh, yeah. And are no longer a band, but they, they, that's who Kowell is. And of public strain. This, the last song on that album is called I Saw. And. Uh, that sold me on that album. I mean, like when I first I heard that, I yeah. was like, "Wow!" And it was because it's got this amazing outro. Like, you sort of when when, when someone's you know when you said song to be played at your funeral, I just thought, "Oh, like it's gonna be massive." Yeah, it was <laughs> like it's like a while well, they're wheeling you out, or yeah. like carrying you out, sort of thing. Just, yeah. It just goes on and on and on. <laughs> but um, but the vibes just there. It's cool. Just, yeah, it's a great song. It'll always be a great song. So what, what's it? What's it? Oh, it's called I Saw. By a woman. By a woman. Who is members of? Uh, so the guitarist, uh, the ba- bassist and the uh, drummer from Woman became the bassist and the drummer in Viet Cong. So it's kind of a little bit all... tied up. Yeah, and it, it tends to happen quite a bit of yeah. Yeah, with bands we like. So. Yeah. Awesome, that sucks. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you so much in. for listening to me all that stuff and <laughs> was a uh, giving me a chance to like be like these bands. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you um, go. Hopefully yeah, you've so. converted a few people out there. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.